Welcome to your commercial-free, uninterrupted investment show. Sponsored by the SEC-registered investment firm, Wilsey Asset Management, a fiduciary firm owned and operated by President Brent Wilsey, who has been putting clients' investment needs first for over 40 years. The Smart Investing Show has been giving unbiased financial information for over 27 years on local radio stations right here in San Diego, providing you with fundamental analysis on stocks and investments you want to know about. Now, here are your hosts, Brent and Chase Woolsey. Well, hello and welcome to Smart Investing Show. I'm Brent Wilsey. Just, uh, well, you know what? I got to say that I, I normally say thanks for joining the show, for being here. We give you that unbiased, no strings attached form of opinion. And with me is Chase. Well, Chase is not here today. It's thrown me all off. Gosh, um, Chase and I normally don't take vacations, uh, but he is uh, actually in New York City uh, this week, and uh, he'll be back next week uh, with us. But uh, so you got me for the whole hour. We'll be doing the same thing. And it's funny, I've been doing the Smart Investing Show now for over 29 years. Uh, probably for about 22 years, I did it by myself. And then uh, Chase joined about seven years ago. And it just, uh, it, it really kind of helped with the show because sometimes, like when I do the numbers, I now have to calculate out the numbers of the Ford uh, target price because normally he can do stuff like that while I'm speaking he can do it now I can do everything myself but uh, we'll, we'll handle it did it for many many years that way phone numbers here we'll give them to you now 833-288-0973 833-288-0973 as you know what we generally do is we give you information for the past week uh, things we felt were important uh, it takes about 10-15 minutes to go over that but again after that we take your calls Again, 833-288-0973. And by the way, if you want this information, uh, we pull out things that we write all week long. We pull together a newsletter for you uh, that you can actually sign up for. It is free, but it has what we talk about here today and more. Just go to our website, smartinvesting2000.com. That's smartinvesting2000.com. You can sign up for the newsletter there. You'll hear what we're talking about, plus other things that we think are important. And what we do here on the show, we generally pull out about three different topics, but we like to talk to our listeners uh, as well to get uh, your opinion and give you the unbiased, no strings attached opinion about what you want to talk about. But um, anyways, let's talk about the big news here. Last week, uh, uh, April, unemployment numbers, uh, they came out on Friday. And while unemployment rates stayed the same, as last month at 3.6%, not as good as they expected, 3.5%. The economy still did recover about 428,000 jobs above the estimate of 391,000 jobs. Now, it, there was a slight revision downward of 39,000 for the combined month of February and March. Uh, this was no surprise to me. The, the, the winner on the job replacement, this was no surprise to me, it was the winner on the job replacement was in leisure in hospitality, those, those are your restaurants, your hotels. Uh, they saw increased jobs of 78,000. Uh, the next big increase, this one kind of surprised me a little bit, was education health services, uh, 59,000. I guess maybe not too much now I think about it because education, yeah, a little bit, but healthcare, no, people getting back to doing this surgeries, you'll have surgeries and so forth. So yeah, I guess I can kind of see that. Uh, even manufacturing, which we need more of it, saw a recovery of 55,000 jobs. and. And I continue to say recovery of jobs because we still have to remember we're not at the same level of jobs prior to the pandemic. So we're not creating new jobs. We're just refilling the jobs that were lost prior to the pandemic. The labor force participation rate was down slightly from 62.4% in March to 20, I'm sorry, 62.2% in April. Now, if you want to, you can read into that number that the higher wages are not pulling people back into the job market. Uh, early in the week, we saw the Jolts report showed a record 11.5 million open jobs with only 5.95 million people looking for work. That's a problem. Uh, people need to get, I guess, a full-time job and a part-time job to help out here. Uh, the money would be great. Uh, people are still very confident with their jobs with one of the highest quit rates ever of 5.5 million quitting their jobs. While I do believe there could be a slowdown in the economy, with these types of numbers, especially the quit rate, I don't believe people are worried about recession or inflation perhaps as much as the media wants us to believe. And yes, we all do not like inflation. Uh, yes, we don't like uh, uh, rising interest rates, the, the recessions in the back of our mind. 
But when you have a job, and not just a job, but a good paying job, and could even get a second part-time job, well, you're not as worried about things because you can recover that. And if you look back in the 70s and so forth, unemployment was higher, uh, you couldn't get a, two jobs, let alone one job any time. So this, I think, will change uh, going forward. And I don't think we'll have that. And, and a recession is caused by many times your own personal feeling like, oh, I better cut back because I might lose my job. We're not having that. And I don't know about you, but I go out on the freeway, even at any time in the morning, it is packed with people going somewhere. I always wonder where are all these people going to? But people are out doing things, going things. Uh, going places, this is something that says, I do not believe we will have a uh, recession. Um, and, and again, a recession is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. Uh, Chase and I talked last week about how the negative GDP of what was at 1.4% last, uh, when well, that was the estimate for the first quarter, uh, is not really a negative when you back out certain things that would have not happened had we had all those ships waiting off the uh, uh, coast of LA be unloaded. But uh, so I'm not worried about a recession, uh, maybe a slowdown from the high GDP rates we had last year, but I think we'll still have positive numbers there. So we'll watch the economy. And again, watch the, uh, the employment numbers. Those will tell the big thing here. Uh, let's talk about the declines in the market because if you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable with declines in the markets, it is justified. The NASDAQ year today is now in bear market territory down over 20%. And yes, the S&P 500 year to date is down over 13%. Now, this is very important for the first four months of the year. The decline, the S&P 500 is the worst start to the year since 1939. So if you feel uncomfortable, yeah, it's not happened in what, almost 80 years? <laughs> of course you're going to feel a little uncomfortable. Uh, we have talked many times in the past about how the overconcentration of just a few highly priced companies in the S&P 500 would cause a big downturn. downturn. It, it appears that time has come and there may be more downturns to come based on those large companies' recent earning results. If you have been investing based on past performance or just because the company's name, it appears that 2022 is the year understanding the fundamentals and valuations is paying off. And you know, I was thinking about this driving in. Like, and again, there's great companies. I mean, Apple's a great company. I've never said it's not a great company. But we seem to be shifting from people buying goods to wanting to travel. And I just wonder, will people say, you know what? I, I don't want to spend that. I don't know what iPhone is now, 1000 1300 whatever. I don't think I want to spend that $1,000 for that new iPhone. I think I'd rather go on a trip to Hawaii. Um, so I'm wondering if we're going to see a slowdown in the growth of the sale of iPhones and at Apple. And again, if you notice, I said the slowdown and the growth. Not that their sales will go negative. But the reason why Apple and many other companies carry these high prices, it's because you're paying up for the high growth of the companies. And if they don't have that high growth, that P.E. ratio of 25, 30, sometimes even higher than that sometimes, could dissipate, come back down to the norm. And the norm is 14 to 17 times. That would cut many companies down in, in large amounts. And I, I think about many retailers, like maybe uh, the Home Depots, the Costco's, these, these other companies that sell products, if the consumer is spending their, their money on, not on products, but on going out to restaurants, going on vacations, that could hurt some of these uh, retailers and companies that have done very well by selling product. That may not be the case for the next 12, maybe 24 months. Who knows how long the consumer will not need those products replaced. And they, they'll still make sales, but the, there could be, and this is the key word, there could be a slowdown in the growth, which would hurt the <coughs> valuations <coughs> of that company. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, the oh, before I go again, uh, phone numbers here. I see a couple of people calling in already, but uh, phone numbers 833-288-0973. That's 833-288-0973. And as always, that will get you through for your unbiased, no strings attached, fundamental opinion about what you want to talk about. But before we go to the calls, I do want to talk about foreign currencies because it is no secret that inflation numbers are running high. But I do see inflation numbers cooling off over the next six months for various reasons. One of the reasons is a strong U.S. dollar as our interest rates continue to increase. Now, the Japanese, Japanese yen has fallen 12% 
since early March against the U.S. dollar. That is a 20-year low. The euro since last May is now down almost 15% against the dollar. Now, what does this do for consumers? It makes products that we purchase from Europe and Japan less expensive, helping to ease inflation pressures. Going forward, I still believe our rates will increase some more, which could strengthen the dollar even more against foreign currencies, which will continue to reduce the price of foreign goods. I I have to point out here, though, uh, unfortunately, uh, the downside is our trade deficit will not be declining. Uh, It will even be increasing. Uh, This is disappointing, as I've always been against a large trade deficit. But for now, it will help ease inflation pressures, I think, over the next six months to come or in the next six months, I guess we'll say, uh, because if the price of goods are coming down because of our stronger dollar, that's a positive. But what I never liked about the trade deficit is we send our dollars over to foreign countries. It's a positive now to help with the inflation situation. But I've always wanted to have more production here. Uh, and as I said, let's make America work again because we have got to stop sending so much money overseas. So good news, bad news there. Um, the strong dollar will help, but we cannot continue. I mean, and actually, I forget the exact number. It came out this past week. The trade deficit for the month, I believe it's two months behind, so it probably would have been this May, probably it was March, uh, was a negative over a hundred billion dollars, which is just a large amount. That is just uh, unbelievable to uh, have that type of uh, a number. And we've got to turn that around. We cannot be sending that much money overseas. So be on the lookout for that. But again, these are, and there's other reasons why I talk about why I'm not feared of a, re- a recession uh, because of some positives, not feared of inflation. We will get through this by different factors. And by the way, if you found this information informative and interesting, Interesting. Uh, again, sign up for a free newsletter on our website, smartinvesting2000.com. That's smartinvesting2000.com for these topics and other others that you may find interesting. They're all there on our newsletter. Alrighty, so let's go to the phones here. Phone numbers here again are 833 288 0973. That's 833 288 0973. Let's go out to, or up to Marietta and speak with Scott. Scott, you're on the Smart Investor with Brent and Chase. How can we help you? Yeah, hey, Brett. This is Scott. Hey, um, I was interested in a company called Sonos. Uh, they're a home wireless audio company, and I was wondering what your take was on uh, on that particular, this particular company at this, this time. Okay. And, uh, Scott, do you hold that? Or are you looking to buy it? Uh, no, I'm looking to buy it. I don't hold it right now. I'm just looking at the potential investment. Um, I'm, I'm hoping at some point uh, we'll, we'll see uh, new home build start to increase, and I think the company will certainly benefit from that. Okay. All right, well, let's take a look to Sonos. Uh, their symbol is S-O-N-O. They're in the industry of consumer electronics. Uh, kind of a high float here, 11.7%, and, and you don't like seeing that because that means people are trying to short the stock thinking that it's going to go down. We do send an 87% institutional ownership. Uh, we see a PE ratio that's not high, but it's about 22.2 versus 23.9. Not high, but not on sale. However, price of sales looks good, 1.8 versus 4.3. Price of book value, 4.6 versus over 100 for the industry. And again, these are valuation ratios. You want these lower than the industry average. And then we do see a nice price of cash flow, 14.4 versus 20.4 and a very good peg ratio, which is what you're paying for the future growth of the company, lower the number the better, 2.3, about one-tenth of the industry at 27.4. So that is a good number there. I like seeing that. Now, the earnings per share growth over the past year, 32%. The industry grew at 37.4%. Sales for Sonos were up 10.7%. Also not quite as good as the industry growth on sales of 23.6% over the past year. We do see a five-year earnings growth rate of 10.4% on the company versus 9.1% for the industry. They do not pay a dividend. Looking at the balance sheet, you got a good current ratio, 1.9 versus 1. Uh, that is a positive, a lot of liquidity there. Ooh, I like this too, a debt to equity, 0.1 versus 1.7. Apparently, this company has almost no debt on their balance sheet at all, so I like seeing that. We see a net profit margin. versus 18.1. Return equity, 22%. Now, the industry has a strange number. 
of 145 percent. That's just not a a, a real number. Uh, 22 percent. I'm I'm okay with that. Looking at what the, the company has done here year to date, we see that 52 week high is 42 dollars and 57 cents. The low 21.34, and we were about at that low. The the, the price on Friday was 21.95. Uh, the market cap is okay. It's 2.8 billion. Maybe a little bit on the small side, but uh, not not a tiny company. Uh, look at the earnings. We'll go out to October 2023. Now, obviously, the company is on a fiscal year. And to get those earnings, what we do is we take a multiple of 16.6 uh, to get our for, Ford uh, target price. Uh, so I got to see. This is what Chase does when I'm when I'm talking. So <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, so we come out with a target price of twenty eight dollars and seventy one cents. Uh, oh yeah, I got to go back to get what I, I said. What the price was? I said I think I said the price was what uh, twenty twenty one ninety five. So let me do that uh, for you really quick. Oh shoot, I just erased the number. Um, so let me just do this again here for you. Yeah, because it, it looks like it's about, we'll say 30% or more away from the target sell price, so we like seeing that. Um, I also do see that the, I'll let you know that the analysts are bringing down those numbers. 90 days ago was a $1.84, so now it's $1.73, so it'll make sure that trend uh, does not continue. But uh, what I see in the company, I, I, I like it. Again, I, I do believe we have over, what, a 20, 30% uh, growth rate on, on the stock. Uh, what I recommend, uh, do some more research on. I think it's worth it because this company, now one thing you did mention to me that, that does more uh, worry me, we do have a real estate expert coming on a little bit later in the show, um, is that I believe it's dependent on new houses being built, I think you said, is that correct? Well, yeah, that's primarily what they do is they install home audio, wireless home audio into houses. Of course, I'm sure they're busy installing into existing homes, but I'm I'm hoping at some point the, the building market comes back and we start having new homes uh, being built, and um, I think they'll benefit from that. Yeah, and, and I think we still have that now. And my concern is, will the building of the homes uh, stop? I don't think it's going to stop tomorrow, but it may slow yeah. down over the next year or two. Uh, so that could be something uh, a little bit different there. But you know, people may still put in their homes. But remember what I said at the beginning of the show as well: people may be spending less on products and goods and seem to be more in the travel mode. They want to get out and do things. We've not done that for two years. But I, I think it's worth the research. Uh, I like the like the company, like it, but you know, check into many other things to see where it stands. Um, all righty? Great, thanks. I appreciate it. All right, Scott, thanks for calling. Have a good one. You too, take care. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. All right, that does open the phone line, 833-288-0973. Again, that's 833-288. 0973. Let's go up to Vista and speak with Brenda. Brenda, you're on the Smart, Vis Smart Vegetable Brent Chase. How can we help you? Yes. Hi, guys. Um, I have a question. Um, I was wondering what your opinion is between a DST 1031 exchange versus paying the capital gains and investing in the stock market. Okay. So you said uh, exchange for properties you're talking about or... Um, well, it could be commercial or real estate, but the DSCs. Okay, so the, the, the DSC is an exchange, because uh, I thought it was called like, because there's one for, for annuities and insurance products. I think it's a 1034, and then I think for real estate it is a 1031. So this is something, and we do have a real estate expert coming on a little bit later. But uh, I think what you're asking, is it better to exchange and roll over one property by another one or invest into equities? Is that the basic question? That's the basic question, um, but we are leaning against um, investing in a property because we just don't want to be a landlord. Yeah, yeah. So we want to be done with that. We're retiring. Um, so uh, we're just wondering if it's a better idea to invest in a 1031 or um, take the tax hit and invest in the stock market. And, and you bring up one of the important factors I, I was going to bring up is that it depends on the situation. And th this is where you want to sit down with your, with your tax person. Uh, we do have at our office, Harrison Johnson, our financial planner. He looks at all these different things with the cash flow, what will be afterwards, after you pay the taxes. You bring up a great point. We want to retire. We don't want to be a landlord. We don't want to pay the expense of a property manager. We just want to maybe enjoy things. So we have done this for people because sometimes it does work out. Uh, be frank with you, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the tax is just too much. Um, so I'm not gonna say no. I'm not gonna say yes, it's the right thing all the time. As always in financial planning, you've gotta look at the overall factors. And uh, But you bring up a good point too, because some people, 
Like, no, I don't want to be dealing with a property because I don't want to get a call that, you know, on a Sunday afternoon, well, the, the toilets were flying. Oh, shoot, I got I to gotta leave. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so um, so what, what I would say, I mean, you know, our financial planner at the office, he does give a free consultation. Uh, are you here in San Diego? Yeah, you're, you're in Vista. So, I mean, yeah, I'm in Vista. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you the phone number if you want a free consultation with him to see if the financial plan is going to be working for you. Because I think he also said you're retiring. So, you want to look at, yeah. you know, there's so many different options on Social Security, <laughs> uh, where you're going to live. You know, some people think, well, it's better to leave California because we we'll go to this state, the state tax are lower. But many times when you retire, it changes your tax situation. And we had, I, I know one couple, I remember him telling me that they were going to go to <laughs> one state to get a lower tax rate. But in retirement in California, it was lower to stay with our tax rate. So these are things when I talk to financial planners. So the, the phone numbers in our office are 858-546-4306. And our financial planner, again, is a CFP, is Harrison Johnson. Garrison? Harrison. Harrison, like Harrison Ford. Oh, okay. Oh, Harrison. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, give him a call. And uh, when are you going to be retiring, Brenda? <clears throat> um, we're hoping by next June. So one year. Okay. Yep. See, and, and that's a smart thing. It's not like, oh, tomorrow. I mean, you got time to plan things out and look at things because maybe what will happen to you have this year, next year, maybe somehow you can split the tax gain over this year and next year, you know, so there's different things you can do. We have time and a, and a good financial planner. Uh, and again, Harrison's on a salary, so he's not going to try to sell you any products. He he tries to do what's best for people. Uh, if you do go, and it's a fee-based plan, but it's something that I think would really help you out because you want somebody that can look at all the factors. And uh, I agree with that. I, and I'm I, I'm probably not going to retire until I'm like 80. But uh, but when you retire, <laughs> you don't want to be have to deal with other stress things. Yeah. So we get it. Right. So. Exactly. Okay. All righty. All right. Thank you. Appreciate your help. Well, Brenda, thanks for calling. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Yes, you too. Bye-bye. All right. And that opens all the phone lines. We have all lines open. So if you mean to call the Smart Investing Show because like, gosh, I don't know if I should buy this stock or sell this stock or I've been in business now for over 40 years. So you might have another investment question. Now's your chance to get through it. I don't tell anybody, but all lines are open. 833-288-0973. That's 833-288. 0973 and I guarantee you'll get on through because again I look over yeah, all lines are open let's talk about uh, 58% of the US pu uh, public has been infected by COVID now with the rising interest rates rising inflation and the war in Ukraine COVID well it's no longer making the headlines now I, I thought it was worth noting something I read over the weekend last weekend actually this was that 58% of the US public has been infected by COVID and that includes 75% of the younger children. Now, I believe that reaches herd immunity. Uh, and, and again, it is true. I mean, we, we still have COVID. I always said that COVID is there. It's, it's not a hoax. It was a reality. But now it's not the big thing. And, you know, I, I, I've been, again, in the, the industry for, what, 43 years. I've always realized that there's always going to be some major problem. Life is just not always perfect. You, you're going to have these problems. And sometimes it'll be worse worse than others. I mean, obviously in, in, in 2000, we had COVID. Oh, it's terrible. And the markets dropped and so forth. Uh, back in 2008, we had the Great Recession. But there's other things in between there that popped up as well. I, I think it was in 2012, uh, what I called the Greek uh, debacle to where Greece uh, defaulted on their debt. Uh, and that was terrible. But we get through these things. And, and, and that's why I bring them up because even back in April, uh, of uh, 2020 with COVID, yeah, it was definitely a bad thing. But I said, we'll get through this. What you want to be doing is looking at companies to buy. Now, right now, as I said, the s and is down year to date about 13.2%. This is when all the phone lines should be jam-packed with people calling in, asking about potential companies that they're looking at. Is it a good time to buy? Because I will tell you, right now, we're probably... Well, for existing accounts, we're probably about 90 to 95% invested at this point in time. Uh, new money coming in, we're, we're, we're slow to pick things, but we do a little bit at a time. This is when you should be putting together your, what I'll call your ammunition to build your portfolio. Not sitting there and change the station and go listen to music. This is when you should be looking at what should I be putting in my portfolio. Maybe your broker uh, came up with an idea for you. 
well, give a call on that. Maybe it's a good idea. Maybe it's not a good idea. Maybe he's trying to sell you something. So that's when you should be calling in because this is a great time to be looking at buys because as market falls, more things go on sale. And you want to be careful because there's some things out there, uh, like I'll bring up Teladoc. Uh, I wish I knew the symbol. Let me see if I can even find the symbol because I know that they were down tremendously. Let's see, see if I can pull it up. Uh, Tela, uh, where is it? Tela, I think it's called Dela, Teladoc. Uh, now I get Teladyne. Uh, well, let me look at uh, who's the other uh, Peloton. Let me see if I have Peloton here. Uh, Peloton, yeah, Peloton. And, and these are companies, I, I bring these two companies up because these were companies that. Oh gosh, you know, I think even a year ago, like they were fantastic companies and people buying them. Well, now you might say, well, gee, it went down from, let me look at Peloton here since I pulled it up. Uh, Peloton had a high, 52 week high of $129.70. You can now buy Peloton for $15.70. Now you might say, wow, that's a great buy. And, and I always love the thing like where people say, well, how much more could I lose? It's at $15.70. Well, I have to point out, if Peloton goes from $15.70 down to about seven thirty-five, dollars you just lost 50%. So don't think just because it went from one twenty-nine down to fifteen seventy, dollars uh, you can't lose any more money. It's a very silly thing to say. Let's just, I'm, I'm just curious here uh, to kind of look at uh, uh, the numbers here on Peloton. We see that uh, they're in the leisure industry, industry 11.1% float on the, on the short side. 90.8% owned by institutional, no PE ratio because they have no earnings. Price of sales looks good, 1.2 versus 2.8. Price of tangible book value, 2.7 versus 38.9. You might be saying, wow, this is a great time to get this company. One of your earnings growth, not very good, nothing there, it's a negative. We do see the sales growth only up 12.1% over the past year, half the leisure, leisure industry up 28.5. Uh, they do not pay a dividend. Very important is the balance sheet. We do see the balance sheet still looks okay. Current ratio 2.3 versus 2.4. Debt to equity 70% versus 90%. So they're not going to be filing bankruptcy anytime in the near future. Net profit margin, this is pr the problem. A negative 27.5% versus a negative 5.5. Return to equity, wow, a negative 48 versus a negative 8. A return on invested capital, a negative 27.4 versus 9.6. As I said, Peloton had a 52-week high of $129.70, a low of $14.70. So they're very close to that low. And I think they were lower, and then they announced that I believe they're talking about looking for investors or spending off 15 or 20% of the company to keep the company afloat. The market cap now is about $5.2 So still a pretty good market cap there. Let me take a peek at the earnings going forward. Now here's what they're looking at. And uh, this year they're expected to lose $3.92 for the year ending uh, December 2022. Uh, actually that's a fiscal year because I now see June 2023. Uh, they're looking at losing $1.10. So I just don't like to buy uh, investing companies that have expected looting, losing earnings going forward. I do concern about the product that they have. It's a great product. I mean, I, my fiance has written it. I've seen it's great product. But the whole thing was at where people could not go to the gym. Well, now the gyms are open, they're booming, people want to be there. So, and I actually see Pelotons in the gym, but they're not gonna be having the same demand they had before. So don't ever think just because a stock went from, in this case, down from what, 120 down to 15. Wow, this is on sale. It could go from 15, as I said, down to $7, maybe even five or lower, could, go, could eventually go up. Alrighty, phone number is 833-288. 0973. That's 833-288-0973. Let's go up to Oceanside and speak with Joe. Joe, you're on the Smart Vegetable, Brent Chase. How can we help you out? You there, Joe? All right, Joe. You know what? Oh. There you are. Joe, how you doing this morning? Oh, I'm doing great. Uh, let Chase know I'm, um, I'd rather him be there than not be there. You know, he's nice to have another head in there yeah we, we, we all miss them i know it i know it <laughs> so. yeah, hey, i was wondering if you could point me in the right direction if um if a comp if a company's going to go public you know because i have a chance to get in on something before it goes public and uh where would you look up information on that company i mean I just go to their website I just see their sales and stuff and 
you know, they, where they're they, selling. Them. Sometimes they, they will distribute. It depends on the size of the, the, the private uh, that, that they're doing. A lot of times they'll have offering memorandums. They'll have different things. Y you do want to get as much as you can because a lot of times they'll show you all the hype, like, oh, uh, they're going to have this and this and that and so forth. And they make it sound great. And you, you dig down deep, like, well, gosh, they had tons of debt. They had no, no customers <laughs> and so forth. So I, I, I don't like private placements and stuff like that because I want to be able to get all the information. And, and that's what's so great about our stock market. You get all this information and they're required by the SEC to have good information. Now, if you're doing a private you know, investment, um, you may be getting a company that, well, I hate to say it, but they, they lied, you know. Uh, well, yeah. who, who cares? So, um, unless it's really a great deal, something, uh, I and I've been doing this for over forty three years. I have never ever recommended anybody do a private private, you know, investment. Not to say there's not a good one out there, but I'm just whenever I invest, I'm very skeptical. I, I'm so afraid of losing money that you know it might prevent me from getting the big one. But on the other hand, I've never lost money. So. Uh, and I've talked to a lot of people that unfortunately these years where they've lost 100, 200, I had one guy lost a million dollars on a bad investment. So, you know, do the most research you can. If you still don't have that comfort feeling, I'd say stay away from it because it's your, your feeling might be right. Yeah, well, I'm supposed to meet up with a financial guy and he's supposed to, I'm just going to ask him, hey, where can I find that information on this company, you know? <laughs> right. Basically. Yeah. But other than that, listening to them, it's just all on faith, you know? Um, yeah. So, yeah, anyways, RRR is the company I was uh, going to ask about today. Yeah, okay. And, and you hold that, Joe, or look at a buy net? Actually, I do hold it. I'm, I'm surprised you asked me because usually you don't ask me the, the questions you ask everybody else. <laughs> but, yeah, I do hold it. Well, good. I'm glad I asked today then. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> let's take a look at uh, Red Rock Resort. Sounds like a pretty cool name. Their symbol is RRR. They are in the resorts and casino industry. Kind of a high float, 9.5% on the short side, 87% institutional hold, held. I like the start here, Joe. P.E. ratio, 8.7 versus not material for the industry. Price of sales, 3 versus 2.6. That's okay. No price attainable book value for either the company or the industry. The regular price to book value is 40.8, which is above the industry at 2.6. Price of cash flow, 8.3 versus 27.9. Peg ratio, very good, 0 0.1 versus 5.6. Now, unfortunately, no earnings for the one year or the five year. Sales over the last year are up 39.8%, not quite as good as the industry, up 69.5%. I do see a very high five-year growth rate here uh, by the analyst of 162.6% versus 13.1%. We also do see they pay a nice dividend, 2.5%, but they have no earnings, so they're borrowing to pay for this dividend, which is not a good thing. We see another good thing, too, I want to point out, buyback yield. I don't talk about this a lot. It's 207 versus 1.4, that is pretty good because of the fact that, you know, that they're doing a lot to buy back stock, uh, increase dividends, things of this nature. So I like seeing that high buyback yield. Look at the balance sheet, uh, current ratio 2.1 versus two, that is good. Debt equity, major problem here, 48 versus 4.1. So you've got a lot of debt on that balance sheet, means the company could be here today and gone next month. Don't like seeing that. Net profit margin of positive 15 versus a negative 2.9. Return on equity 406% versus 5.1, which tells me they probably have very low equity. Uh, looking at the stock price here, we see that they close on Friday at 39.44. The high is 58.74, with the low being 36.54. Uh, looking forward here from the analysts here, we do see we've got, uh, what, eight analysts. They do say in uh, December 2023, they're looking for earnings of $3.05. And I do have a little problem here. Uh, the lights went out on me because um, uh, I guess I'm not where the motion detector is. So my calculator is, is a solar-based calculator. Uh, so um, let's see. Start so flinging let's... your hands in the air. I, well, I'm trying that. It's not working. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, yeah, there we, we want to see oh, that. Yeah, maybe it did work. I, I really had to, to be excessive on that to do that. But the target sell price is $50.63. Uh, and let's see. And I said that uh, it was what closed at $39.44. So let's see what the... If we got enough here. Yeah. 5063? Yeah, 5063, I think I said. Yeah, so that, that would give us growth about 28%. So uh, yeah, above 30%, we like it. 
Uh, let me look at one other thing for you too as well, Joe, and that's the trend of those estimates. Uh, they are actually increasing. 90, day, 90 days ago, it was 285. Uh, now it's 305. So analysts are thinking it's more. But again, you gotta remember about that debt in there. So this is one of those growth companies, could be like a Peloton, where we went up, 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 it was great, and all of a sudden the bottom just fell down. It's a casino company. Uh, these are very, very exciting companies. Everybody likes them, but it does not look like, well, they, they could be in bankruptcy three, four, five years down the road. That, that would be my concern. So, and I think you do some trades, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I'll make some money out of it because I'm still up on America. That dollar cost average is on it, but, um, you know, I'll make some money off it. But they're local casino. You know, they're not like, you know, the, the MGMs and stuff like that. You know, they're more for the locals. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, you mean local, like here in San Diego, or, or are they in India? Oh, I'm not. I, actually, I can't. I can't remember where, but I mean, like the locals go there. Like, not just that's not. Oh, like, okay. Okay, I got you. Yeah. So it's not a big, big name. With, with or again, the MGMs or you know, uh, Hard Rock yeah. or whatever like that. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I just, I again, I'm very conservative. I don't like that they have such a. Uh, I think it was a high debt to equity. I think it was. Yeah. Forty, forty-eight point zero. Yeah. That, that, that just stuff like that just worries me. But again, they, they're, they're building in the right direction. It can change very quickly on you. But uh, numbers look okay, but I would not invest in it myself personally. All righty? Well, thanks a lot, Brent, again. And uh, you have a great day. You too, Joe. Thanks for calling. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. That opens the phone line, 833-288-0973. That's 833-288-0973. And uh, I'm going to say Ricardo and Art in uh, San Diego, hang with me. We're gonna get to you guys next. But what I wanna do is I said I had the real estate expert coming up, Robert Behek, and he is with me now. So, Robert, good morning, how you doing? Friend, I'm doing well, thank you. How about yourself? Well, good, good. Before I let you speak a little bit, I wanna tell a little bit about you, that uh, country, Countywide Mortgage uh, is one of the leading top 100 mortgage companies in America for 2012 all the way to 2021. I presume in 2022 be the same thing. Uh, you've been serving the community now for over 30 years. Um, also, too, you don't just do mortgages. I mean, you actually help clients with credit repair. Uh, something I saw that stood out, too, was helping the senior community with new and improved reverse mortgages. This was one thing that has always been scary for people. But uh, how long have you been working with reverse mortgages? About 15 years now. Yeah, yeah. So you're an expert on that because we have seen some people when they get to, you know, that retirement age, unfortunately, don't have that. And they're so afraid of losing their home through reverse mortgages. So that's something else they could call you on to talk about as well. But um, uh, let, let's talk about it here because I, I, I know we don't have a lot of time here with you. I appreciate taking the time to spend time with us. But, but let's talk about the purchase market. You know, it's still very strong. Uh, where refinancing has slowed to a crawl. What, what is going on here, Robert? Well, obviously, with interest rates climbing, and we see them climbing throughout the year, uh, people aren't qualifying anymore. There's not as many folks that qualify for homes, so we're changing to different products. We're starting to see arms come back, but they're not the old traditional arms that we used to see in the past. Now they're fixed for seven years or ten years, and then they adjust to an arm. So they offer a much lower interest rate, and that's keeping people buying properties. Uh, where refinancing has really, uh, a lot of folks have already done it. They've gotten a really good rate, and uh, they're sitting in a good place. You, you know, and Robert, one thing, I think that was back in uh, the Great Recession back in 2008 where people were afraid of adjustable mortgages. And you may have this number, you may not. But I, I remember a fact that I read that adjustable mortgages are not as scary as people think they are. People think they can go from you know, 3% all the way up to 15% tomorrow. And I think somebody looked at the average over 30 years. It was not that bad. Do you, do you have any comments on that? Have you ever seen anything like that on just what your mortgage is not being so so scary? It, it's funny that you say that because a lot of the folks that are financially savvy that uh, own more expensive homes or have a better insight into financing often pick an adjustable rate mortgage because really? of how long a, a mortgage actually lasts. It's not very rarely do they ever go for 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that's something that's true because I, I, there's very few people you said that I, that I know like, yeah, they've been in a house for 30 years. I, isn't the average like seven years or something? Is that the average? Five to seven years is about yeah. as long as the mortgage 
in states. Not states. that people live in their house for that long, but they they do some type of other financing option right. for sure. Well, Robert, and, and obviously, you know, real estate is, is changing. We hear the higher interest rates. We hear people are getting a little frightening, but we still have like a, a low inventory. Uh, what's your belief on the value of real estate uh, for this year and, and going forward? You know, Brett, we really see real estate right now, the value of it staying strong through all of 2022. We don't see it actually going down. We see it either plateauing and stay the same or going up a little bit. It is a uh, very tight market, and we have a lot of buyers that are out there buying with cash. So it really uh, takes a very competitive market to be able to make some of the purchases happen. And, and what about uh, 2023? Is say a change there, 2024? Well, can you predict out that a little bit there? The vote is still out on 23. Uh, we'll see how the rate hikes hurt us, right? right. I mean, this is, uh, I've been doing this for quite a while. A half a point hit, I've only seen it uh, once in my career, and that was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So we just did the first one, and we're being told that we're going to see two more. Uh, really uh, un unseen before. So we'll see how it all plays out. Okay, yeah, and, and one thing too, and I always tell people too, if you're buying a home to raise your family in, and and for the school district, you really shouldn't care about what's going to happen in 2023 or even 2024. But I, I think you also do. Uh, you have loans for uh, investors for rental properties as well. Is that correct? We do a lot of investor loans right now. There's a lot of folks that are buying properties because they are looking for some type of uh, investment to uh, move up. And so they'll rent their personal residence and then they'll go ahead and buy another one. And then uh, they, they look to get the equity out of their house to buy the next house. So yeah, it is one of those things. But I would agree with you, Brent. We, we see uh, the real estate market a lot like you folks and uh, really enjoy your program uh, in the stock market, you know, it's one of those things over a long term view, uh, you're going to live somewhere and it, it's great to own your own place. Hey, and Robert, another thing I want to talk to you about too, was that I think a lot of times people spend a lot of time looking to buy the right home, but don't spend enough time finding the right financing through like countywide mortgage. Do you find that people, they just like go with whoever, or what are you finding? Usually uh, you're referred by a real estate agent and unfortunately they're sending you to the person that they're used to or that they work with. Uh, we work with a lot of great agents, but the challenge is, is that not all companies have as many options. Uh, sometimes they'll just go to their local bank, which isn't a bad thing, but again, not everybody has all the different opportunities that we do. And, and, you know, and I think it's the same thing with us. I mean, anybody can invest in the stock market, but you really want somebody to kind of take the time and understand what they're doing. You've been doing this for 30 years. I'm sure you can find things that people didn't even think about uh, had they not gone to, to you as well. Uh, Robert, how do, how do people get hold of you? Yeah, our, we're in town. We're local. Our phone number is 760-746-7388, or they can reach us on the web countywidemtg.com. That's countywidemtg.com. And Robert, I think your business is like my business, kind of like a lot of the families in there as well. I think your two sons work for you as well. So it is a family-run business, which works, I think, pretty well, doesn't it? You know, we are very fortunate. I'm very fortunate to have both my sons work with me. Yeah, it, it is quite the pleasure, isn't it? <laughs> it, it it's a really great thing, for right. sure. Well, Robert, thank you very much for calling in. Appreciate you taking out the time on the Saturday to do that. Uh, good luck with the, the real estate market. And again, I highly recommend you as a mortgage person because don't just shop for the home, shop for the mortgage person. Oh, one more other question, too. Do they have to deal with the person that they are told to deal with, or can they say, no, I'll deal with somebody else? They can deal with anyone they choose. No one can force you to go with anyone. As a matter of fact, if you're buying new construction, like the gentleman was asking about earlier, we deal with a lot of new tracks that uh, where we have financing options for first-time home buyers that are looking at new homes. Very good. Robert, again, thanks for spending your Saturday with us. We appreciate it, and have a great weekend. You too. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. 
Okay, again, that's a Robert B. Hick, uh, runs Countywide Mortgage. Give him a call at 760-746-7388. Again, that's 760-746-7388. Uh, and he'll help you out with the mortgages. And again, reverse mortgages, refinancing, new construction, all that for you. Uh, again, talk to Robert B. Hick, 760-746. 7388. And as always, if you can't get the number, you didn't write it down, you want it, you know, you can always get it through us. We'll, we'll pass you on to uh, Robert as well at our uh, website, smartinvesting2000.com. That's smartinvesting2000.com or our number 858-546-4306. I highly recommend Robert as your mortgage person. All right. Our phone number is here, 833-288-0973. Uh, let's see who is next here. Let's go out to or up to Vista and speak with Ricardo. Ricardo, you're on the Smart Investor, Brent Chase. How can we help you? I'm looking to buy Dupont symbol DD. DD. Okay. And what did you say in Dupont that you thought would be a pretty good buy at this point in time? Um, it's fallen down to six uh, sixty four dollars. Okay. All right. I'm looking to buy. And one thing that we talk about, uh, we always talk about uh, how oils move, you know, used in many different things, such as you know asphalt and chemicals and and you know plastics. Well, Dupont is a specialty chemical chemical company. So one thing you want to look at is that okay, this is kind of based on oil. So even though we'll, we'll give you the numbers, you want to realize too that this probably won't have better earnings until oil starts coming down again. So, and this is a, a, a thing I wanna point out too for you and, and the listeners as well, Ricardo, is that one thing you wanna do is have a balance. You may have in your portfolio oil businesses, uh, could be a company, could be something else that has to deal with oil. Well, here would be your balance because this would, as, as oil prices go up, oil companies do well, as they go down, this company, DuPont, may do well. So let's take a look at the DuPont uh, uh, for you here. Symbol is DD. They are in the industry of specialty chemicals. Uh, only 1.3% float, so not many people putting a short on there. 73% owned by institutional ownership. We do see the PE ratio 23.7 versus 23.1. Uh, price of sales 2.1 versus 1.8. Price to book value, 10.2 versus 74. That's a very good number. Price to cash flow, we do see that at 16.1 versus 14.5. And then a pig ratio, 1.1, far better than the industry at 6.4. Now, we do not see any earnings growth over the past year. The industry was up 36.5. Sales are down 18.4%. Not at, well, the industry's up, industry's up 20.8, so DuPont not doing well there. However, we see a nice five year growth rate of 13.7 versus 7.1. You get a 2% dividend, they only use 10.1% of the earnings to pay that out. On the balance sheet, current ratio 1.9 <clears throat> versus 1.7, debt to equity 0.4 versus 1. We do see a net profit margin, very good, 38.8 versus 9.3. Uh, return equity is 24.5 versus 13.8. Looking at the stock price, we see it close on Friday at 65.42. The high is 86.28. The low, 64.35, so very close to that low. Love the market cap, $33 billion. Let's take a look at the uh, numbers going forward here. We do see the year ending, December 2022, and that should be 2023. I'm wondering if they have the numbers wrong, but we got to use what we have here. Uh, $4.94 uh, times our multiple of 16.6 uh, equals a stock price of 82. Uh, and I said the stock price is a, what? Uh, what I always say that stock price was again, 50, 65. So that gives us about that 30% growth rate we look for. I, I like this company, uh, Ricardo. Um, this is one that I get excited about because I think they're going through what I call a temporary downturn. Now for me, temporary could be six, 12, uh, 18, 24 months, but this is a good business. They're not gonna go away. They're on sale now because of high oil prices. It's a good company paying a 2% dividend. These are ones that I say, you know what? This is a good long-term hold. So I still recommend you do more research on it because I could be missing something on this quick analysis here, but definitely worth more research on a DuPont uh, symbol DD. Already? Thank you, sir. I right, thank you for calling. Have a good one. Bye-bye. You too. 
All right, let's go back out to, uh, where are we going to go out to now? I think we're going to go out to, uh, let's see, Art in San Diego. Art, you're on the Smart Vest Show, Brent Chase. How can we help you? <clears throat> Stanley Black & Decker, symbol SWK. Okay, and and uh, do you hold that? Looking to buy that? Yeah, I've been tracking it for a while, and I, I bought about what I would call a half position when it was around 140, and then they uh, unfortunately have continued down, so now they're down around 120, and so I'm wondering what I should, should I continue to hold or uh, finish buying the rest of my position now that it's even lower. Okay, let's take a look at uh, Stanley Black & Decker, symbol SWK. They're in the tools and accessory industry. Uh, not much float, 1.4%, 88% institutional owned. Uh, we do see that they have a PE ratio of 15.5, better than the industry at 17.4. Price of sales, 1.2 versus 1.5. No price of tangible book value and no price of cash flow. Now that one kind of confuses me. You'd have to look at the financial statement to find out why there's no cash flow because they have a PE ratio. So perhaps there's some reporting issue there. Now, look at the earnings over the last year. They are down 20.8%. Industry was up 1.1. Sales did decline by 4.8%. I'm sorry, sales were up 4.8%. Industry is up only 3.5. So that's a big positive there. Five-year growth rate from the analysts looking good, 13.1%, more than double the industry at 5.8. You also get a nice dividend yield here of 2.6 versus 2.1. They only use 35%. Of their, uh, of their earnings to pay that out. Look at the balance sheet, current ratio 0.9 versus 2.1. I'm I'm okay with that, it's not too bad. Debt to equity 1.1 versus 0.7, okay with that, that as well. See, and this is where you wanna to try to look at the balance sheet to see is the debt increasing or decreasing? How's the cash flow going? Are they using cash to try to pay down this debt or the increasing debt, because you don't want the debt to keep increasing, uh, you want it to decrease, because right now you're at an okay level, but if it increases, that could be a problem for the company down the road. Net profit margin, okay, 8.4 versus 8.6. Uh, we do see, wow, a 52-week high in the stock of $225. The 52-week low is 118.90, and it is at $121.03, so you're getting that almost uh, at a 50% discount. Let's see what the analysts say here about the earnings going forward, going out to December 2023. The mean of 13 analysts are saying they're looking for earnings of $11.46, the high estimate 13.31, the low 9.61, so fairly tight movement there. And if I take 11.46 uh, times the 16.6 multiple that we use, I get $190.24. I do have to point out, I do see those earnings 90, day, 90 days ago for 2023, with $13.29, as I said, now 11.46. So the analysts are putting those earnings down. I, I worry a little bit about this company because I think, as I said earlier in the show, I don't see the economy slowing down or stopping. But this is a company that, again, as I believe, depended a lot probably on the, the building market and other things as well. So I'd, I'd want to know what does Black and uh, Stanley Black and Decker really do? I, I know they have drills and stuff like that I've, I've used and seen, but what is their their, their sweet spot, so to speak, because the numbers say yes, but make sure you understand the business before you actually invest in the company. All righty. Got it. That makes sense. All right. All right. Well, well thanks for calling. When you go into the... well, I'm sorry, what was that? Well, I was just going to say, if you go into Lowe's or Home Depot, they pretty much own the tool department there. Oh, do they really? Yeah, you know, and you might just yeah. want to stand there for a while and just kind of watch see how many people buy the tools or do they buy the off-brand tools? I mean, that's one thing, too, that people are kind of looking at. I'm assuming they've been hit by inflation as well. People might be saying, well, I can spend $10 for that screwdriver from Black & Decker or I can get the off-brand for $8. That could be another thing. This is why Chase and I always say do the research because – I mean, before we buy a company, it's again, 10, 20 hours of research because we wanna understand such things. What are consumers doing? What is the company doing about that? So this is the research we, we talk about. So understand the business because the numbers say, this is a buy, but you've gotta understand the business. All right, Art? Right. Hey, thanks so much, Brent. You're welcome. Thanks for calling, have a good one. Bye-bye. You too. All right, let's go out to, and I got about two minutes here. Let's go out to Encinitas and speak with John. John, you're in the Smart Vegetable, Brent Chase. How can I help you? I enjoy your show. Thank you. Probably three or four, three, about three times a month. Um, anyway, uh, I wanted to get your impression. It's too bad Brent, uh, Chase isn't there because 
I want to get your impression of Paychex, P-A-Y-X. I like companies that use other people's money and make money on it. That's a good, <laughs> that's a good thing. I like that. I, I like that analogy. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and I, I, if you look at the numbers and pull it up, I have been with them on and off for over 20 years. They pay a nice dividend. They last split about 20 years ago. But, you know, this is a company that I think is really good, but I wanted to get for a number of different reasons. It's solid, but I wanted to get your impression on it. I mean, the numbers and the ratios look good. P-A-Y-X. Okay. Let's say it was a paychex. Again, symbol is P-A-Y-X. <clears throat> They're in the staffing and employment services. Only 2.6% uh, short there. 72% ownership institutional. PE ratio a little bit high, 33.2 versus 27.8. Price of sales, 10. That's well above the industry at 1.8. Price to book value, 36.8 versus over 100 for the industry. And then price to cash flow is 28.9, also above the industry at 20.1. You do have a good peg ratio, 2.6 versus 9.8. We also do see that earnings per share, one year up 28.1%. Not quite as good as the industry at 43%. But gosh, 28% growth on earnings, can't complain about that. Sales are solid. Up, yeah, it's very solid. Uh, sales are up 14% versus 2.6. That's positive. Five year growth rate, 13.3 versus 9.4. We do say they pay a decent dividend, 2.6%. Yeah. They do use 70% of their earnings to pay that out, but eh, I'm still okay with that. Look at the balance sheet uh, current ratio, 1.3 versus 1.6. Debt to equity, very good, 0.3 versus 0.6. Net profit margin, this one kind of like what you said about them using money for other people's money. Net profit margin, 30.2% versus 6.8. Return on equity, 41.4 versus 37. And then looking at the stock price, we see that the 52-week high is $141.92, the low 96.12. You're about in the middle range there, about $124.16, so that's not too bad. Let's look forward here at the analyst, see what they say about the uh, uh, paycheck earnings. Done a fiscal year <clears throat> ending May 2023, looking for earnings of $4.06. Let me take the multiple of 16.6 uh, .6 on that to get the target sell price. So, ooh, only 67, did I do that right? I, gosh, uh, make sure I did that right. That's, that's, that's a disappointment for me, yeah, 67.40. So the stock is well above that, so I, it's just a great business, got some great numbers there. Um, but I just can't overpay for a company no matter how good the company is because you're probably trading, and now I think about it, probably closer to eh, about 30 times earnings probably is what you're paying, you're paying for that company. Great business, but I, I gotta say, uh, John, just, just too darn expensive. Yeah, it's a little, but, but like I say, I've, I've used it for uh, about 20 some odd years and, <clears throat> um, you know, it works. It's solid. It's not one that you kind of play on a month-to-month -month basis, but it's it's a solid company. And and um, so and, and if you look at ADP, uh, which is also you know in the same business, I, like I say, just like companies that take companies' money, hold it, and play with it for a couple of weeks, and then you know pay the IRS and whoever else they pay out to, uh, in terms of writing those checks for payroll and all. Yeah, and and the other ben benefit too here, uh, John, is that. Uh, Right now, we have a very strong business climate, and that's why this company will probably stay at a, a multiple that it is. But if that changes, which I am hoping it doesn't because I want more people working here in the U.S. and less on the, yeah. the trades, uh, this company will stay strong. But um, I, I just don't like paying three times earnings for the company because that's not yeah. a little expensive. That's very expensive. Remember, the average over 100 years, 14 to 17, uh, 30 times. Just I couldn't sleep at night if I held this company as good as it is. All righty. Well, well, I'm not even close to 100 years old yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't play the odds. You could be wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate your show, and uh, like I say, I'm one of your clients. So. Well, good. Well, John, thanks. I appreciate the call, and thanks for being the client. Bye-bye. Wow. Time that pretty well. There's a closing bell. Thank you for listening to the Smart Investing Show. It is for informational purposes only and should not be used as investment advice. If you'd like to discuss in more detail your investment needs, have other investment questions, Feel free to call myself, Brent Wilsey, or Chase Wilsey at 858-546-4306. That's 858-546-4306. Or visit our website, smartinvesting2000.com. That's smartinvesting2000.com. For more daily educational information, along with investment tips, go to our Facebook group page as well, Smart Investment Brent and Chase Wilsey. Also to the website, you can also Get the podcast with the show in case you missed part of the show or can't listen at uh, 8 o'clock on Saturday mornings. 
Thanks again for listening. Have a great day. We'll talk with you soon. And may I say.